San Antonio starts right now. We begin with late breaking news, a deadly shooting on the city's northwest side. The shooting happened on Cheryl Brook near Bandera Road. Sarah Costa is there at the scene. And Sarah, what can you tell us right now? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. This is a very active scene. Police um, have been on scene for about 30 minutes at this time. What we know so far is that one person is dead, another person is in custody. I'm going to step out so you can see what's happening behind me. Crime scene detectives just arrived on scene. When I talked to the surgeon, sergeant about maybe 15 minutes ago, he said police were called out around 810 this morning to the Cheryl Oaks apartments. Police say a witness called after hearing a single gunshot come from an apartment unit. When police entered that apartment, they found a man in his 20s dead with a gunshot wound to his head. The witness gave a description of a man in his 20s to police, saying that man was wearing a red T-shirt and jeans, telling police that suspect walked away heading toward Bandera and Evers, which is just a couple of blocks from the Cheryl Oaks apartment complex. And it's it's in that area, maybe about 15 to 20 minutes later, that police were able to find that suspect and detain him without incident. Now, police say they found a gun on scene. No other people were inside that apartment unit when police arrived. At this time, it is unclear if the two were living together or what the relationship is between the suspect and victim. Police don't know what led up to the shooting. And at this time, the suspect is detained and police are questioning him. So what we know so far is that a man in his 20s is dead and a man in his 20s has been detained by police. Uh, they don't believe any other suspects are involved in this case. Crime scene detectives just arrived about 10 minutes ago and they believe they'll be here for another hour or two uh, investigating this deadly shooting. Live from the northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Sarah, thank you. Now to the latest from Uvalde. Today marks one week since the deadly mass shooting there. As families are preparing funeral services, we are learning more about their loved ones' final moments and a bipartisan group of lawmakers on Capitol Hill continue talks on new gun safety measures. David Sears joins us now with the latest. David. Yeah, Mark and Steph, Uvalde, Texas, the entire nation still reeling one week after 19 students and two teachers were gunned down. Their families now demanding their deaths not be in vain. The first of 21 final farewells now beginning in Uvalde. It's heartbreaking and I can't begin to imagine what these families are going through. Seven days ago, panic hit Robb Elementary. ABC News obtaining video of frantic moments outside the school. Guy with a rifle. Police breaking a window, pulling children to safety. Somebody jump out of the window. Oh, the kids. the kids. They're getting the kids out. A camera capturing what sounds like a dispatcher telling officers a student is calling from the classroom. Is there anybody inside of the building? Um, Officials say Uvalde school police chief Peter Arredondo wrongly believed they were dealing with a barricaded subject and not an active shooter. Arredondo ordering tactical teams not to enter the classroom where children were calling 911 for help. Sources say federal agents finally used a custodian's key to get inside and killed the gunman. Uvalde's mayor announcing Arredondo's scheduled city council swearing in ceremony is canceled for now as the city grieves. The police response to the school now under state and federal investigation. In Uvalde, children joining calls for change. If we want to heal, we need some new rules. Because if we don't change nothing, it's going to be the same and it's going to happen again and again. In Washington, President Biden pushing a bipartisan group of House and Senate members to continue work on gun reform. recognition in their part that the Navy can't continue like this. I know that it makes no sense to be able to purchase something that can fire up to 300 rounds. That bipartisan group is already working. They're going to hold a Zoom call today to review possible gun reforms. President Biden has chosen Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell and Texas Senator John Cornyn to lead the Republican side of the negotiations. They hope to reach a deal on a framework by next week. As for funeral services for the victims, you can find that information on our website as well as information on how to help the families in need. You can do that right now. David, thank you. Later today, we will be participating in 21 minutes of silence on our social media platforms in honor of each of the 21 victims killed at Robb Elementary. From noon until about 12, 21 p.m. today, KSET social media pages will go silent for 21 minutes. Several news outlets across the state will be participating as well.
Through the pain and emotion of the Uvalde school shooting, we continue to see people reminding us to remember the names of the innocent lives lost. However, a San Antonio woman taking it a step further and making sure the children's words are not forgotten. She sat down with John Paul Barajas, who shares her story. To the children, I would tell them, you did not die in vain. You had nothing to do with this but you do not die in vain. Mary Moreno is keeping the words of the 19 children whose lives were lost in the Uvalde massacre alive and in front of her northwest side community's eyes. She's placed cardboard cutouts of kids in her front yard, each of them with a quote. Is there one that sticks out to you more than others? I'll play dead so I won't get shot. I want my parents. That's what they're asking. More than anything, I want my parents. But I will rub blood on my dress to pretend that I'm dead. That killed me. Moreno hopes the words of the young victims and words from other kids who are scared to go to school will be enough to inspire change. They're not gone. Their spirit is very much alive and they're talking to us. And we need to listen. And that's why I put their quotes because we need to listen. The memorial in her yard took about three days to put up. She already had the cutouts from when she used them to advocate for kids being separated from parents as they seek asylum at the border. The cutouts went up at 7 a.m. Sunday. Moreno plans to keep them up at least until all the funeral services have finished. We have a lot of jockers that come by and as I was putting them on, they would come and, and tell me that they were beautiful. Others would say that they were, they were very moving. John Paul Barajas, KSA 12 News. Ms. Moreno says she's okay with people coming by to see the memorial for themselves. If you'd like to do that, we have her address on our website. Just look for it in this story. And for now, let's look at today's 9 at 9. Today marks one week since the mass shooting at Robb Elementary in Uvalde. As funeral services are beginning to take place, a bipartisan group is working to review possible gun reforms. Those will include red flag warnings and expanding background checks. They hope to reach a deal on a framework by next week. Authorities have released new photos of an escaped prisoner at the center of a nationwide manhunt. These are close-ups of tattoos that Gonzalo Lopez has on his chest, arms, and back. Lopez has been on the run since May 12th when he escaped from a prison bus. He is now on the state's 10 most wanted fugitive list. Hurricane Agatha slammed into Mexico yesterday afternoon. The Category 2 storm brought winds over 100 miles per hour and up to 20 inches of rain. The National Hurricane Center says Agatha is the strongest hurricane to make landfall in May along Mexico's Pacific coast since record keeping began in 1949. Violent weather has left behind widespread damage in the Midwest. Minnesota has been particularly hit hard. Despite the damage, though, there are no reports of deaths or serious injuries. The strong storms took down trees and left thousands of people without power. President Biden is expected to meet with Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell today to discuss high inflation. Prices continue to rise for everything from gasoline to food and housing. The Fed has talked about aggressive interest rate hikes to address the issue. Oil prices are starting to move higher again. They are pushing over $115 a barrel now that European Union leaders are agreeing on an embargo against most Russian oil imports by the end of the year. Now, crude oil prices this year are already up over 60 percent, helping to push gas prices in all 50 states past $4 a gallon. Lumber prices are going the other way. Wood futures are now off by more than 50% compared to their high in early March. Prices are being pushed down by worries about a slowdown in home building with interest rates on the rise. More baby formula is on its way in the U.S. A company from France says it is sending the equivalent of 5 million bottles worth of formula for babies with allergies. The shipment should land by the end of June. Labor shortages could mean more closed signs around the country again this summer. The Wall Street Journal says job openings are still double the number of unemployed people looking for jobs. Places like pools and food stands are struggling to find enough workers. And that's today's Nine at Nine. And taking a look outside with a live cam, hopefully some of that cloud cover will help with the heat we're expecting later today. It'll help briefly, you know, for about an hour or so, and then that sun comes out and it'll be blazing hot this afternoon. I can't tell you there's a couple showers out there, and we'll show you the radar here in just a second. First, let's start with some headlines. Here's what you can expect today. We're going to see more heat, humidity, and wind. Basically a repeat of yesterday, other than 
we'll get a couple showers out there. Wednesday into Thursday, a lucky few could see a, a downpour too. Look, it's not going to be widespread. Very few of us are going to see any rain, but there is a chance there. And the tropics, we've been talking about Agatha really falling apart over Mexico, but will the remnants of Agatha become out? Well, more on that here in just a bit. There's the radar as promised, and you can see it's very hard to see, but there are some blips there, some very small showers working south to north. And so if you see a, a quick downpour, just know it, it will last, you know, maybe 30 seconds or so and then move right along. It's not going to produce much rain. Pollen count, mold is low at 420. And your forecast for today, expect those temperatures to make it up to about 91 by lunchtime. And we top out at 97 this afternoon. Heat index will be close to 100 and it only gets hotter from here. That seven day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. Top stories this morning. San Antonio police say they have no witnesses and very few clues when it comes to an overnight shooting. Someone fired into a home on Waverly Avenue, grazing a woman who was sleeping on the couch. The bullets also came close to hitting other family members, including a baby. Katrina Weber is in that neighborhood northwest of downtown and tells us police say it may be tied to another crime. The police say they are still looking into the possibility that what happened here may be someone's idea of retaliation for a fatal stabbing that happened earlier this month. But they say they are still investigating that. Meanwhile, they're still trying to figure out who's responsible for the shooting. They say someone drove up and fired into the home in the 900 block of Waverly Avenue. When officers arrived around 3 this morning, they found a 59-year-old woman who had been grazed by a bullet on her upper body. Police say there also were bullet holes in the headboard of a bed. Those bullets hit about a foot above the heads of two 18-year-olds and an eight-month-old baby. A 17-year-old also in the home was not hurt. The paramedics treated the woman here at the scene, but it was unclear whether police planned to have her transported to a hospital or not. Reporting from northwest of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Time right now, 910, about 80 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. We are speaking with a local doctor about stroke awareness and how to respond if you or someone you know is having a stroke. Plus, there was a huge turnout last week for blood donations after the shooting in Uvalde, but the need never stops. Max Massey joins us after the break to talk about how else you can help in the days and weeks to come. Just about 914, there are still quite a few ways you can help out the families of Uvalde on top of the monetary donations to official funds. You can also donate blood. And Max Massey joins us live now with the very latest. Uh, Max, how's it looking out there? Good morning, guys. Well, right now I'm actually in the process of donating blood. They actually just stuck me a few seconds ago. But here's the thing. I thought we'd be the first ones here. There were a few donors before me. They were here dark and early, ready to do what they can, ready to help out. Joined here with Roger. So, Roger, I know you guys were in Uvalde. You guys were one of the first ones to actually respond to the situation. And what has the last week looked like from your perspective? We've had a great outpouring from the community wanting to give back somehow, um, and blood donations is what they've, they've chosen something yeah. to do that. Um, not just here in San Antonio, but in the Uvalde area, like you said, we've had a great outpouring of people wanting to give and, and come together as a community to help in some way. One of the things you, you mentioned this morning was if you make an appointment, stay with the appointment. That's correct. There's so many people that want to come out and want to donate, and the appointments are full right now. So if you have an appointment, keep it, we are asking. And if you can't make it, give us a call and let us know you're not going to be able to make it because there's others who are wanting to give back. And uh, if you want to come over to our, our, our donor pavilion here where you're located right now, we are accepting walk-ins. So and that is another option that you can do when you come out and donate. I want to take us back about a week ago. A week from today, last Tuesday, I was texting you, and you guys were already on it. So what went through your mind when you found out what happened, and what did you do? Uh, here, at, at the, the staff here is amazing. They, they knew right away what to do. We've gone through this before. Sutherland Springs happened a few years ago, and our staff knew that blood is vital, and it's important in those key moments uh, when things are happening. So uh, our staff jumped into getting at least 25 units over to the Uvalde area as soon as we started to hear what was happening. Um, a helicopter picked them up and took them over. Within 30 minutes, we had blood there in the Uvalde area and assisting the community in any way we could. Now, when I give blood today, 
what happens to that blood? Is it stored? Is it used immediately? What does the process look like? It takes 24 hours once your blood donation is, is once you donate. Um, and that goes because it goes through um, testing, it goes through component separation, and then it's on a shelf. And within 24 hours, it's ready to be transfused, which is important because um, you never know. We shouldn't wait for tragedy to happen for, for, to you to, for people to come out and donate because you never know when we're going to need that blood. All right, Roger. Thank you so much. And guys, if you have any questions about the process, how you can help out, we're going to have all those answers. Just head to KSAT.com. And of course, coming up on the news at noon, Mark, Stephanie. Thank you so much, Max. Max Massey over at the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. Thank you for donating. Max, 916, about 80 degrees. And just joined us now. And you were tracking a few tiny little showers, what, probably as wide as a county road, maybe? Yeah. Teeny tiny. Very yeah. hard to see on radar, but they are there. Yeah. It's okay. exciting that we're going to need to use the radar, I suppose. A, a lucky yeah. few yeah. may get a brief shower. It's not going to last very long. Let me show you the radar and show you where that activity is right now. Up and down 281 there, moving uh, south to north, uh, right around the Elmendorf area. You can see some of those light showers. And I mean, uh, this is just nothing more than a couple drops, and then they move right along. We're going to see this kind of trend, I think, next couple days with some of these light showers here and there. Uh, you may briefly have to use the windshield wipers. A little more coverage as you get down towards Goliad, Yorktown, and Quero. Some showers there as well. No lightning strikes or anything like that. These are just going to be those light streamer showers as we call them and certainly not enough to help us with our rainfall deficit since May 1st we've only picked up 86 hundredths of an inch and that's about three inches below average if we end the month which it looks like we will at 0.86 that'll make it the 10th driest May on record since January 1st we've only had 4.48 inches and that's about eight inches below the average just to give you some perspective there so we are in a pretty deep hole we need some more rain and those kind of showers just aren't going to cut it. As we go outside for you, mostly cloudy skies, 80 degrees at the airport, 81 Stinson, 81 in Kelly. Still looking at a pretty good southerly breeze, south southeasterly breeze. Winds were gusty yesterday. It'll be breezy again today, maybe not as strong as yesterday, but still some gusts 20 to 25 by the afternoon. You see the cloud cover and this satellite picture looks very similar to yesterday. These clouds slowly scatter out. We get mostly sunny skies by the afternoon and that pushes temperatures into the upper 90s. At the moment, a lot of 80s here around Bear County, 81 Randolph, 81 Stenson, 78 Canyon Lake, 81 right now in New Braunfels. Dew point trend, well, dew points are pretty high right now. They do fall off some this afternoon, probably into the upper 60s or mid 60s, but that is still enough to carry a heat index. So that high temperature, if it's around 97 or so, which I think it will be, the heat index will be somewhere around 100. And we'll probably carry a heat index into tomorrow as well. You see all the humidity here across the state. It continues to pour in on south and southeast Julie winds. Dry line sets up across West Texas today. And that's where we could see some thunderstorms this afternoon, but they'll stay far to our west. Storm system moving across the country produced a lot of severe weather yesterday in Minnesota. Now going to produce severe weather Oklahoma down into the Texas Panhandle and back down into West Texas today. Again, all of this staying to our north and northwest. Now this front does try to sink a little bit further south as we get into tomorrow and Thursday. It's possible that it gets close enough on Thursday to touch off a few downpours, but it's not going to move through. And I, I'm not so hopeful on rain chances. It's just going to be a little bit too far to the north for us. Today's forecast, we get up to 97. That heat index, though, around 101. That's your feels like temperature. In a lot of places here in Texas, we'll have a heat index up over 100 degrees today. Here's the forecast, and I mentioned some of those light showers. This is at 5 o'clock today, nothing going on, but tomorrow morning, a couple of showers popping up, and then tomorrow afternoon, we'll put in a 10% chance of rain. The radar will look pretty similar to what we're looking at now. And then on Thursday, as that front gets a little bit closer, this model does touch off a few showers, maybe a downpour or two, especially east of San Antonio. Again, it's only a 10% chance of rain. Not great. Case at 12 hour forecast, 91 noontime. We start to lose some of those clouds this afternoon. Mostly sunny in 97 by 4 and 5 o'clock. Southeasterly winds anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. And a slow cool down tonight, 88 by 8 p.m. And clouds build back in overnight. Your extended forecast, we go 96 tomorrow, 96 Thursday, 96 Friday. There's that 10% chance of rain there. After that, Things really crank up. We're now going 100 on Sunday, and next week looks like a scorcher, 101 on Monday. Coming up in just a bit, we're going to take a look at Agatha. We'll have some video for you coming in from Mexico. 
And what does that mean for the Atlantic? Could Agatha become Alex in the Atlantic? We'll talk more about that in just a bit, guys. All right, thank you, Justin. 921, about 81 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up next. Coming up, we take you to a new exhibit at the museum that explores the changes happening on Earth. Welcome back, just about 925, a new exhibit at the museum here in San Antonio can explore how we can innovate solutions for a more sustainable future. The exhibit is called Earth Matters Rethink the Future, and it dives deep into the science behind biodiversity, climate, and carbon emissions. Tiffany Wirtz just joins us live from the museum with a look at the new exhibit. <laughs> what are you doing, <laughs> Tiffany? <laughs> yeah, this is not a marshmallow. It's a head is in the clouds this <laughs> this is a bit here earth matters because you can come here think about the future think about our planet think about anything you want it's just so great this exhibit has so many different sections this one right here we have staff with the museum to show us how it works it's about energy Meredith, good morning talk to us about what we're looking at right now yeah so this is a um, city that we are all going to power here together um, so each of us are representing a different renewable energy source so i've got wind power here we've got solar power biofuel hydropower and we're all pumping and we're all feeding the power grid. So we can see how we can all um, sort of put this together and together we can um, power this entire city through renewable energies. Representative of And that oh, was Tiffany live yeah. at the museum. That's live. too bad because that was a really cool exhibit there. Yeah, we had a technical challenge that there and we'll see if we have time to work her back in. Right now it is 926, about 81 degrees. There is, of course, more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including our live Q&A with a doctor from Methodist Hospital about stroke awareness month and what you should know. And we're continuing our great grad series by featuring a recent graduate from Our Lady of the Lake University, Jonathan Cotto, going to share her story when we come back. In your morning headlines, the investigation into that Roe versus Wade draft leak is fo focusing inside right now court offices and let them eat cake. Plus some wild teenagers dodging a train and how's your spelling? David Sears is here to explain that. How's my spelling? How's, it? how's your spelling? That yeah. depends on the day, right? right. You know, the B is back huh? and there's a buzz. Okay. About the B. Fantastic. We'll get that out in just a second. But first, let's start with this. The investigation of the Supreme Court leak is starting to get a little more direct and a little more intense. Investigators at the Supreme Court are now asking law clerks for their phone records and they also want them to sign affidavits as those investigations continue to pinpoint the source of that leak. A draft of a Supreme Court opinion on overturning Roe v. Wade was leaked and then published by Politico back on May 2nd. Chief Justice John Roberts called the leak absolutely appalling, suggesting one bad apple had tainted the public perception of the court. Word is some of the clerks were caught off guard and maybe looking for their own lawyers. The Mona Lisa got caked over the weekend as she hung on the wall in the Louvre Museum in Paris. Literally, a man in a wheelchair went up to the famous painting and smeared cake on it. The good news is that painting is covered by bulletproof glass. The handicapped visitors are allowed closer access. The 36-year-old man tried to disguise himself in that wheelchair. He wore a wig and makeup to look like a woman. Police pounced on him, arrested him. While they were doing that, he threw roses at their feet. Then while he was being taken away, he was yelling, Think about the earth. There are people who are destroying the earth. Think about it. All artists, think about the earth. This is why I did this. Think about the planet. That's according to some eyewitnesses there in the Louvre. Uh, they were there and watching this all unfold. Police got him, took him to a psychiatric infirmary, and then off to the police station. All right, let's take you to Canada. You're on board a train and three teenagers are running down the track, running for their lives. Or were they just racing the train over the bridge? The engineer applied the brake, but no way that train was going to stop in time. Luckily, the boys were able to get out of the way. The Metrolink Transit Agency there in Toronto posted the video as an appeal to parents to show their kids what could happen if you are walking on the tracks and running with a train. 
The annual spelling bee is happening again this year, but it has lost a little luster thanks to the pandemic and TV. A lot of schools and sponsors have dropped out. There were 245 sponsors, now just 198. Even the number of spellers has been cut in half. ESPN not broadcasting the competition anymore. The B has its own networks, Ion and Bounce. Nonetheless, the B will go on. The finals coming up this Thursday at 7 o'clock Central. And I was going to see if I could throw out some really big words for you all to spell, but I, I don't know any big words. <laughs> <laughs> so you're off the We're good. We're good. Yeah. You know, right, dog yeah. with a W and cat with a K or something. Some, some trick questions there. I, I got nothing. I, I want to play Scrabble with this guy. Ah. This guy. Oh, for, for, a, no. for a good time. Thank there you, go. David. All right. <laughs> 932, 81 degrees outside with live cam. You know it's going to be one of those warm early summer days when the morning low drops down only to the mid to upper 70s. Pretty much, yeah. And, and give David some credit. I mean, he's pretty good at Wordle. I've seen him oh, at work. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. Yeah. So he is doing some preparation on the side. Yeah, I think he's sandbagging a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, yes, it is humid. It is warm out there. We look at the radar this morning. We've got a couple of light showers working across the area. These are light and quick moving, but they are there. Let's uh, look at some of those blips. You can see them down there around Elmendorf working south to north. Seguin, maybe, maybe a stray shower. Uh, this is going to be nothing more than a couple of sprinkles. Maybe some more significant showers as you get down towards uh, Goliad and Yorktown, but even then, these just aren't going to put down much rain. We'll see this trend of some of these morning quick showers over the next couple of days. Uh, otherwise, heat and humidity are going to be the big story here. The big picture, you can see the cloud cover across Texas. A lot of humidity pouring in on a southerly wind and some of those showers developing a little bit closer to the coast. Uh, the cloud cover will continue to thin out like yesterday. We'll see a lot of sun during the afternoon. So your case had 12 hour forecast 91 noontime, partly cloudy, and then we'll go mostly sunny by 4 p.m. 97. 97 by 5 o'clock. It will feel warmer than that with that humidity close to 100 and then a warm evening to 88 degrees by 8 p.m. with mostly clear skies. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Well, today's health chat, we're talking about National Stroke Awareness Month, which is observed in the month of May. So strokes can be dangerous and deadly, and it's important to know how to respond quickly if you or someone you know is having a stroke. Joining us live this morning is, is Dr. Adam Blanchett, a neurologist at Methodist Hospital and the medical director for the stroke, pro stroke program there. Easy for me to say. Good morning, doctor. Thanks so much for taking a minute to talk with us this morning. What is a stroke and what are some of the more common symptoms we should know about? Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, stroke, stroke occurs when a, a part of the brain uh, loses its blood supply and that usually occurs with a, a clogged artery. And so that part of the brain is dying. Um, the common symptoms one might see with a stroke, uh, we use a mnemonic to help us remember uh, B fast, uh, B E F A S T, uh, B standing for balance or walking difficulties, I standing for vision issues or double vision, F for face where you see facial weakness, A for arm weakness, it usually involves arm and leg weakness, uh, S for speech difficulties, that can entail uh, slurring of speech or not getting words out, and T for time, uh, reminding us that uh, brain is. Uh, that this is a time uh, sensitive issue uh, and uh, brain is time. <clears throat> and these are some of the warning signs. What should a bystander do if they see these signs or they think someone's having a stroke? Well, a stroke is a medical emergency and that's what we get out, particularly around May to, to get that word out. We think about a heart attack. We think about other uh, major uh, uh, emergencies and stroke is one of those. Stroke is a medical emergency. You need to activate 911. You need to activate the medical emergency services. And Dr. Blanchett, uh, you hinted that time is of the essence when it comes to this sort of medical crisis. Why is it so important that 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 treatment be immediate? Well, as I mentioned, you know, the brain is losing its blood supply and it's dying. You know, for every minute you're having a stroke, two million brain cells die. And so, you know, time is brain as we talk about. So the sooner you can get to a facility that can treat that problem, we can uh, slow down, reverse uh, that uh, dying of the brain. And Dr. Blanchett, Methodist Hospital is classified as a comprehensive stroke center, the highest level of certification for hospitals with specific abilities to receive and treat the most complex stroke cases. Are there any advanced treatment options available to treat the most complex cases? 
is correct. Yeah, comparative stroke centers have the highest level designation. And so we have uh, those clot busting medications one might hear about, but we also have the ability to do what's called a thrombectomy or the ability for our surgeons to mechanically go into the artery and actually remove those clots. Um, and uh, similar to a heart catheterization one might see. And on the screen, some prevention measures uh, we're looking at. Uh, one of them is to manage blood pressure. That's correct? Correct. I tell people the best way to take care of a stroke is not to have one. Um, do your screenings, diabetes, blood pressure, obesity. These are high risk for stroke. Uh, I always joke I try to run myself out of business. So, you know, take care of those things before you need us. All right. Dr. Adam Blanchett, neurologist over at Methodist and stroke expert. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. We appreciate your time. All righty. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Blanchett. Have a good rest of the week. We do want to go back to late breaking news this morning. Right now, crime scene investigators are gathering evidence at an apartment complex on the northwest side after one man is dead. Another, we understand, is in police custody. And this is happening just after 8 a.m. at the Cheryl Oaks apartment near Bandera and Evers Road. Sarah Costa is live on the scene with the very latest. Sarah. Good morning, and we were much closer, but police asked us to step back because right now they are interviewing a witness and they want to protect that witness. This after a man was found shot dead in his apartment and police say they do have a suspect in custody. So here is what we know so far at this time. Police were called out around 10, about 10 minutes after eight this morning to the Cheryl Oaks apartments. Police say a witness called them after hearing a single gunshot. When police entered the apartment unit, they found a man in his 20s He's dead with a gunshot wound to his head. The witness gave a description of a man in his tw 20s wearing a red T-shirt and jeans to police, telling police that suspect walked away heading toward Bandera and Evers, which is just a couple of blocks from here. It was in that area where police found the suspect about 20 minutes later and detained him without incident. Police say they found the gun on scene inside that apartment unit. No other people were inside the apartment unit when police arrived, and investigators believe no one else was in that apartment when that shooting happened, other than the victim and the shooter. At this time, it is unclear if the two were living together or what the relationship is between the suspect and victim. Police don't know what led up to the shooting, and at this time, a suspect is detained, and police are questioning him at this time. Now, it is important to note that a shooting took place in this very same parking lot just two weeks ago that left two people injured. Investigators say they'll be here for about another hour or so on scene and they are waiting for the medical examiner to arrive. Live from the northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. All right, thank you, Sarah. Approaching 940, about 82 degrees. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back. 943, welcome back. Not one, not two, but three majors. That's what one student, our Lady of the Lake University here in San Antonio earned as she walked the stage this, this month for graduation. And besides her academic success, she's also a student athlete. We're gonna meet Olivia Eagleson, our next feature for great grads. And Jonathan Goto shares her story and what she credits to her success. Being a triple major is an accomplishment in itself. Olivia Eagleson earned three degrees at Our Lady of the Lake University in accounting, finance, and management. And she credits her time on the soccer field for her academic success. One of my coaches, um, Arthur Salazar, required us to have um, a specific GPA or we'd have study hours. And as much as I love studying, um, it's not something I wanted to do like in a community room. Eagleson also said that leaving her hometown of El Paso also helped her spread her wings. I think if I wouldn't have left, I would not have reached like, the level of success that I've had here, at least. After visiting OLLU in high school, she said she fell in love with the campus and the community and knew it was a place she could grow. Now, she's ready for the real world and grateful to have landed a job before graduation, being a real estate analyst at Circle K. After reaching her goal of graduating college, Eagleson's new goal is to just be happy with what I'm doing in life. Just be happy, um, no regrets, and just um, live, live life how I want to live it because it's short anyway. And she has some advice for other teens and young adults who are just starting their college journey. As any transition will be from uh, the classes you're taking in high school to college, just hang in there. It does get easier um, the more accustomed you come to midterms, finals week. Like you'll, you'll get the hang of it. Just hang in there. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Best wishes to Olivia. Yeah, congrats.
Right now, Justin is tracking Agatha. Agatha, and if this crosses mm -hmm. over into the Gulf or the Atlantic, it becomes a different name storm, doesn't it? It gets not? a new name yeah. because uh -huh. it's a new, different body of yeah. water. Uh, would become Alex. Okay. Looks like that it may become Alex. And before we get to Alex, we got to show you what happened in Mexico after this made landfall. This is pretty early, early in the year for to, to see a storm like this. So let's uh, show you what uh, Mexico is looking at as Agatha made landfall. Some pretty strong winds. There's Cat too. And there was some minor damage here and there is the tourist district there of Mexico on the uh, west coast. Some pretty powerful winds and some down trees, some flooding, things like that. Uh, that's the, the scene coming out of Mexico. So let's show you the big picture here and where Agatha sits right now. It's, it's basically the remnants and the uh, city over Mexico and falling apart. Winds are at 30 miles per hour and this really will become a remnant low later today. But as it crosses into the Gulf of Mexico, there are warm waters here. And despite the fact there are some not so favorable winds aloft, we think that this could develop into a separate system here as it moves into the Gulf and eventually the Atlantic. Hurricane Center gives us about a 60% chance of development here over the next couple of days. And in one of our computer models does show it uh, perhaps developing. It would be slow. I think the bottom line here is it's going to bring some pretty heavy rain to places like Miami, Southern Florida, and perhaps Cuba in the coming days. This is Saturday, by the way, 7 o'clock Saturday. So you can see this is where one of our computer models puts this storm system, and perhaps it develops a little bit further as it moves out into the Atlantic. We'll keep you posted. It's not going to affect Texas in any way. We don't get any rain out of it. We stay dry here. And here's a look at the time lapse. A lot of clouds this morning. And now they're starting to break up a little bit, starting to see a little bit more blue sky. 80 degrees at the airport, south southeast Julie winds at about 16 and gusty. That dew point, fairly brutal, 72 degrees. And that makes it feel so sticky outside. Dew points will fall off a little bit this afternoon into the mid-60s, but there will still be a heat index, even with a dew point of 64, 65. That'll make it feel a few degrees warmer for that feels like number. We even have a heat index at this hour. It's 80 degrees, but it feels like 84 out there. 79 in Seguin feels like 83. So you can imagine these numbers will jump up pretty quickly now that we are starting to see some sun. Uh, the month in review, we've been showing this last several days, but this is the last day of May. So we'll show it one more time here. This is going to go down as the hottest May on record, I believe. Uh, the hottest May was 81.9 degrees. That was in 1996. So far, as of the end of yesterday, we were at 82.8, 6.4 degrees above average, and I see no reason why we won't keep it above that uh, number back in 1996. So this is going to go into the record books. It's been so, so hot. And as we look forward, this is the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. So we're talking about June 5th through June 9th. The uh, Climate Prediction Center believes that it is going to be above average still. Uh, perhaps uh, some triple digits in the forecast going into next week. So just a heads up, this heat is fairly unrelenting. A cooling shower would be nice. We may get one or two of those, but not much. This is at 5 o'clock today, just uh, mostly sunny skies. As we get into tomorrow morning, we are seeing maybe a couple of showers popping up. And then by the afternoon, just a 10% chance of rain. Uh, it will be east of 35, I think, for the best chance of any showers next couple days. And then a weak frontal boundary tries to work in on Thursday. Still, I think, probably just a 10% chance of rain. But there could be some pop-up showers and maybe a thunderstorm on Thursday. Something to watch. It's not going to put down much rain. And uh, we'll put in a 10% chance today, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. But after that, it looks like it just gets hot and we'll see a lot of sun going into the weekend. 98 on Saturday, 100 on Sunday, 101 potentially on Monday. And next week could feature a lot of triple digits. So hmm. beware. As we head into June, it looks like it may be getting even hotter. All right. Back to the hundreds. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Well, here's a refreshing place to be. The Comal River is welcoming tubers back at pre-pandemic levels. And according to New Braunfels city officials, the number of hotel rooms and rentals across their city shows this past weekend was a busy one, bringing in a lot of money to the local economy. Alicia Barretta explains how the city prepared for its first holiday back on the water in a long time. They're raising a cup for the Texas sun. Bring sunscreen. Doesn't matter what your skin type is. I promise you the sun out here is relentless. <laughs> and to the unofficial start to summer. First time here at the river, 
think it's going to be a good, uh, good old time. Got all my friends over here. It's a tubing first for Ryan Liguez and his friends. Hopefully we won't lose anything or you know any cups in the water. City officials say thousands have made it back to the Guadalupe and Comal rivers, helping stimulate the New Braunfels tourism industry and economy. The buzzword in our industry is exceeding pre-pandemic levels, and it feels that way. According to Workforce Solutions Alamo, the unemployment rate for April in the San Antonio New Braunfels metro area is 3.3 percent, a decrease from March. The city of New Braunfels also added some incentives for new hires who could receive up to $300 depending on position, something Mallory Hines, the vice president of Convention and Visitors Bureau, says helps. However, the need is still there. Tourism is a major piece of our economy, and it, it was tough not being able to welcome our guests. So we are so grateful to be able to do that again. Oh! feels like we are moving in the right direction. In the meantime, officers will still be out in full force to make sure things flow smoothly. The second that people are being belligerent or disrespectful, obviously, I mean, people are going to intervene. And Another focus for the city of New Braunfels continues to be to hire seasonal employees to carry out other summer activities. On KSAT.com, we have a list of current job openings for the Parks and Recreation Department. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. 951, about 82 degrees. We'll be right back. Well, we were just talking about New Braunfels and the Comal River. Comal ISD is kicking off a series of summer job fairs beginning today. The fast growing area includes nearly 600 square miles, including portions of Bear, Guadalupe, Hayes, and Kendall counties. The district is hiring for multiple positions, including teachers, custodians, maintenance, and substitutes. Just to mention a few, and today is the first job fair, and it will be at Bill Brown Elementary on Highway 46 in Spring Branch from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. There will also be another job fair tomorrow, but if you can't make it out this week, there will be three other opportunities. You can find more information about this on KSET.com. And coming up tomorrow on GMSA at 9, it's Katie's Science Lab on the road, and it's one of her last ones for this school year. Tomorrow, she and David will be out at Cody Elementary on the far west side. They're going to be doing a project with a second grade class there, and you do not want to miss it. And students at Boone Elementary School are going home this summer with brand new books. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, we're going to tell you how these students raised enough money to buy books for their own school and for students at a neighboring campus. That's fantastic. Justin. Yeah, we're jumping into the 80s now. It's going to be a hot day, 97, no surprise, right? Small chance of a shower, a passing shower next couple of days. Nothing that's going to be significant or add up to much. And then we uh, head towards some big time heat this weekend. Do we have a better idea how our summer is looking so far? Or do you want to well, look, I'm ask in a week or two? It's, it's <laughs> La Nina. Uh, it's probably going to be pretty dry and hot. And if this tells us anything, we're, we're, we're in for a... Uh, Pretty brutal summer. Long summer. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Hoping for that passing shower. Hoping. <laughs> Hope. Yes. If you're one of the lucky ones, <laughs> yes, uh, it'll it'll be nice for you know like 30 seconds. Okay. okay. We'll, and, we'll we'll take it. They'll yeah. take okay. And of course, our team is keeping an eye on the tropics, see what happens with this system as it enters the Gulf and eventually part of the Atlantic. Justin, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow.